I live in a small village in the western countryside of England, though I'd better not tell you which one, for your safety above all else. A lot of this won't make sense at first, but bear with me, there's a lot I need to say. Let me just start from the beginning. My village has a population of 178 people at the time of writing this, the oldest being my grandfather. Now, he isn't just well known around the village because of that. He is also the only living person in the village, alive, when Phantasmos Funland was still open. Phantasmos Funland was a carnival open between 1956 to 59. The reason the carnival closed after only three years of service was because one day, in June of 59, Phantasmo got up and left, without warning. Well, according to my grandfather anyway. My grandfather was six at the time, the first and last time he went to that carnival. His mother had terminal cancer and only had mere months to live, while his father was lost at sea when he was just mere months old. His mother wanted to make every last second with her son a memorable one, so she took him to Phantasmo's Funland. The village was larger then, and the carnival was quite the tourist attraction, so the park was packed out. As my grandfather and his mother fought their way through the crowd, they suddenly heard a loud voice announcing, Gather round! With every screech of the voice came another wave of people pushing and shoving, until eventually my grandfather was separated from his mother and pushed into a red and purple striped carnival tent. My grandfather got to his feet, his eyes adjusting to the newfound darkness. In the center of the tent was a circular shroud where the light from the seams didn't quite reach. Within that shroud, he could make out a face. Not a normal face, mind you, but still, a face. The face itself wasn't exactly monstrous. It just wasn't human enough to not be unsettling. Long, pointed cheekbones and a sharp chin, accompanied by the off-white skin and perfectly chiseled eyebrows, made it almost amusing to look at. If it wasn't for the smile. It wasn't the cliched, wide, horrifying grin. It was more mischievous, like a child who had just pulled off the biggest prank of his life. The combination of these features made it strangely creepy. My grandfather was awestruck. Being a naive child, he didn't understand the dangers. Although, none of us could have predicted the events my grandfather would set in motion that day. He approached the figure, eyes glued to the unmoving face. That's when he first heard creaking. At this point, my grandfather would always stop telling the story and stress to me about the creaking. How if you heard it, it was already too late. Anyway, once my grandfather was in reaching distance of the figure, he could make it out more clearly. The thing was made of wood, cruelly painted like some sort of mime clown hybrid, black and white striped overalls with splashes of colourful polka dots. Its eyes looked down at my grandfather almost sincerely, contrasting with the excessively mischievous smile and overly pointed features. A top hat of a strange material adorned the lanky figure's head, slightly obscuring its glassy eyes. He could also see a small box nailed to the strange statue's chest, with a bronze plaque attached, reading, Pennies, please. My grandfather looked at the peculiar entity with anticipation of its function. Reaching to the very depth of his pocket, he retrieved a small copper coin and raised it above his head towards the light to ensure it was indeed a penny. As he did so, out of the corner of his eye, he noticed that the figure's eyes had now widened and were now fixated on the coin. My grandfather stood on his tiptoes to reach the lanky statue's chest. He notes how when he pushed the coin into the brass slot, he never heard it land. Standing away from the oak creature, my grandfather noticed the pin drop silence. He found it strange that a once bustling carnival was now dead, silent. It was so quiet, it became deafening, until the silence was shattered by echoing creaks, coming from the wooden oddity. After a few moments of small creaks and snaps, the creature sprung to life 
it snapped into different shapes, as if stretching after a long slumber. It moved in an exaggerated fashion, like some sort of cartoon. It twisted its torso left then right, as if looking for the hero that freed it from its slumber. Then, it tilted its head down, creating a snapping sound as it did so. Ah, well hello young man. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. The creature bellowed in a well-spoken voice, curling out its long, pointed wooden hand to my grandfather. My grandfather didn't move, just stood and staring, absolutely awestruck by this magnificent being. It recalled its hand and looked to its side, as if embarrassed. The creature then went on to thank my grandfather furiously before composing itself and standing at attention. With a jolting flick of the hand, the creature pulled off his top hat, taking a bow as he did so. It then announced his name. Mr. Ticklethwist, at your service. It then lifted its head from the bow until it was right in my grandfather's face, revealing his eyes were more than glass. They looked realistic. The left eye was an emerald green, and the other was a dirt brown, while the hat now looked to be made of stitched leather. I have a proposition for you, young man, Mr. Tickle Twist announced. He swung his torso back, and with a magical motion of his fingers, he produced a coin. Like Mr. Tickle Twist, it was made of wood. Mr. Tickle Twist tossed the coin down to my grandfather. As he examined it, he noted the two carvings on each side. One side depicted a top hat, while the other showed a ringmaster's cane. My grandfather looked up at the strange clown-like figure in confusion. Mr. Tickle Twist carried on his pitch. You see, young friend, I like making people happy, so I'll give you the chance to get anything you desire. My grandfather's eyes lit up with excited curiosity, and Mr. Tickle Twist recognised that, smiling that mischievous smile, and once again curled his spindly arm down to him. Does that sound good? My grandfather nodded and shook his hand without hesitation, knowing it would seal this extraordinary deal. Pleasure doing business with you, young friend. Now, there is a slight catch. I may have forgotten to mention. Mr. Tickle Twist's mouth curled into a half smile as my grandfather looked on with a now suspicious glare. Now, now, young man, let me explain. You see, if I just granted every wish everyone asked for, then there would be chaos. There has to be a sense of chance. This is a carnival after all, he asserted as if saying the punchline of a joke. The coin you now hold is the item of chance. Flip it, and if it lands on the cane's side, then you'll be granted any wish you so desire. Mr. Tickle Twist squinted his eyes as his smile widened. However, if the coin lands on the top hat's side, well, let's just say, I take something from you instead. My grandfather didn't like the way Mr. Tickle Twist said those last words, and... Despite his young age, looking up at the leather hat and real-looking eyes, he knew that wouldn't be pleasant. Mr. Tickle Twist cracked his wooden knuckles before folding his arms, as if waiting for my grandfather to proceed with his fantastical carnival game. Looking down at the coin, my grandfather positioned it upon the nail of his thumb, cane side facing up, and flicked his thumb as hard as he could, sending the coin skyward flipping so fast, it became a light brown blur as it slowed in the air and began its descent back down to the child. My grandfather held out both hands to catch it, but he never got the chance. Mr. Tickle Twist snatched the coin from the air with tremendous speed. He then cradled it against his chest, opening his hands slightly, obscuring my grandfather's view. Mr. Tickle Twist looked down for a moment before his eyes slowly crept up to my grandfather and he began to smile ear to ear. He began shouting and dancing. Congratulations, young man! Revealing the coin to show a ringmaster's cane. My grandfather exhaled a sigh of relief 
and waited to be prompted for a wish. However, that's not what Mr. Tickle Twist did. Instead, he began to slink around my grandfather like a snake until his wooden lips were next to my grandfather's ear before he whispered, Your poor mother. My grandfather was taken back as he snapped his head to be face to face with the now slinking clown. Ah yes, my boy, I know all about that. And I know more, but that's beside the point. Mr. Tickletwist then slithered back to his place in the shroud. That's what you want, isn't it? For your mother to beat the unbeatable. Well, that can be arranged, my young friend. His voice slowed and deepened. My grandfather hesitantly nodded, only thinking of his mother's well-being. Very well, Mr. Tickletwist croaked, walking towards my grandfather and towering over him. Then crouching down to his level, he extended a single pointed finger and pierced my grandfather's chest, sending a sharp pain pulsating through his body. My grandfather fell backwards, landing on his backside and clutching his chest. As he looked up, he managed to catch Mr. Ticklewist vanish in a desaturated red puff of smoke, leaving nothing but the coin alone in the shroud. Just then, my grandfather heard gasps and screams from outside the tent. Getting to his feet, he scooped up the coin and rushed outside to find a huge crowd of people staring at awe in something on the ground. Pushing and crawling his way through the sea of people, he eventually emerged, face to face, with his mother. Her eyes glazed over and unmoving, her mouth twisted in a frozen state of terror. My grandfather grabbed his mother's shoulders, shaking her, tears of pain and confusion streaming down his face, begging her corpse to come back. The last thing he remembers from that day was a cold hand on his shoulder, turning to see a maniacal wooden grin before everything went dark. He awoke during the dead of night inside the tent that harboured the wooden monstrosity, clutching the coin. Opening his eyes fully, he looked around the tent, finding it empty. My grandfather tells me how, throughout his life, Mr. Ticklewist would return to continue this sick game of chance. Either my grandfather is the luckiest man alive, or the game of chance wasn't as fair as it seemed, because not once did the coin land on the top hat side. And with each wish, more tragedy would befall my grandfather. No matter how harmless the wish seemed, this thing would always twist it to hurt somebody he loved. His foster family, his wife, co-workers, even the family dog, fell prey to Mr. Ticklewist's deadly touch. Soon, my grandfather became a recluse, only allowing me into his life to do his weekly shop, as he is now too sickly to do it himself. I am now sitting next to my grandfather, as he lays on his deathbed, babbling about how the game is finally over, maniacally moaning that Mr. Ticklewist is finally coming to get him. I never knew what to make of his story. My mother would always tell me that he was just ill upstairs, but how does that explain all the strange deaths in the family? I really don't know what to believe. But, over his nonsensical mumbling, very faintly, I can swear I can hear the sound of wood creaking. Also, I hear what sounds like pencils or wooden stakes tapping on the bedroom door. <laughs>